Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, December 3rd, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I am delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, uh, today is Friday, so that means it's the, the Van Heeps Deeper Life Group meets tonight at 7 o'clock. They meet every other Friday, and this, I think, is the Friday on. So Van Heems Deeper Life Group meeting here at New Beginnings at 35 DeGarmo Road at 7 p.m. Great group of people gathering together to uh, worship and study together uh, and connect with, connect with each other's lives. It's a great, great time. Uh, we have no events scheduled for tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, on Sunday, the 5th, of course, it's the second Sunday of Advent. We have our 10 o'clock morning worship service as normal, uh, but it's an Advent worship service, so it's not as normal. We've got Christmas carols and Advent hymns. We've got uh, we've got artwork that goes along with the special Advent sermon series. We're all going to be, many of us are going to be dressed in purple. We've got an Advent wreath with Advent candles. It's a great, great celebration. And I uh, hope that you'll join us uh, at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. And then at 7 p.m., of course, is our Deeper, which is our Deeper is our, our, our Deeper Life group, our Deeper Bible study for teens. So hang out, come on out, 7 o'clock for deeper. On this past Sunday, I preached the first Sunday of Advent on John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Uh, I talked yesterday about how the Word was with God. Today I want to talk about how the Word was God. Um, and this, these two together, the word was with God and the word was God. This is the mystery of the incarnation, that, uh, that God the Son and God the Father are separate. They're not identical, and yet they are unified uh, in one essence. And how that all works out and how we can make that uh, square that circle in our heads, it's very challenging, right? Uh, intellectually, mentally, it's difficult. We don't have anything in our experience that... Uh, that correlates with it. You'll see lots and lots of um, analogies that are made to, you know, one uh, three-leaf clover. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are three leaves on one clover. That's not quite right, though. Uh, you see the analogy of the, the yolk, the white, and the shell of an egg. Uh, no, it's not quite like that either. You, you see an analogy that I am as a person, Lord, as a person, I am both a son of my father, a father of my son, and the husband of my wife. Those are three roles that I fill. Well, no, it's not like that either. None of these analogies really uh, gets at exactly uh, what uh, what the relationship within the Godhead is. Instead, we use we use terms like he was with God and he was God, and that's kind of how we make it work. We we make broad statements that aren't directly contradictory, but are difficult to understand. And that's how we embrace the mystery of the Trinity. But what does it mean that the word was God? My, one of my favorite passages in the Bible is Colossians chapter one. And I read that as the opening passage uh, on Sunday morning. In, in Colossians chapter one, the apostle Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. In chapter 2, verse 9, it says, In Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Uh, there is a, it has to be said that Jesus is fully God, even as he is fully human. Jesus is fully God, even as he is fully human. When you look at Jesus walking the streets of Jerusalem, getting mud between his toes when you look at Jesus uh, eating food, when you look at Jesus uh, bathing, brushing his teeth, if they brushed their teeth back then, I don't know if they did that. Uh, when you look at Jesus uh, taking care of necessary physical activities, right? Uh, what you're seeing is you're seeing God doing those things. Jesus, in Jesus, all the fullness of the deity was pleased to dwell. There is not this sense in which uh Jesus' uh, activities were not the activities of God. What Jesus did was what God did. Um, it's not just what would God do if God were on this earth. Jesus 
is God. And so Jesus, uh, Jesus' actions are the actions of God. This, is, this makes sense of the really bizarre fact that Christians worship Jesus. Um, there's no other explanation for it than that Christians believe that Jesus is God. Christians believe it is sinful. In fact, the biggest sin ever to worship anything other than God. It is uh, the Christian understanding that to worship a human being is it's blasphemy. It's something that we cannot countenance. Um, we do not believe in worshiping any object or any person. All of our worship belongs to God, and yet we, we worship Jesus. We worship Jesus. And from the very beginning, we've worshiped Jesus. Uh, think about Jesus after his resurrection, appearing to his disciples and doubting Thomas, the first person to doubt the resurrected Jesus is also the first person to worship the resurrected Jesus. He falls at Jesus' feet to worship him, and Jesus accepts Thomas's worship. Uh, we worship Jesus. We believe that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the one who created the universe, that Jesus is the one who sustains it all by his the word of his mighty power, that Jesus is the one who is ultimately our savior and that Jesus is the one who will return to make everything right. Jesus is God. So we worship him because he is, um, he is, he is our God, right? Uh, Thomas Oden, one of my favorite theologians, says that the single pivotal question is whether Jesus is rightly understood as the expected Messiah of Israel Son of God and Lord, or not? That's the pivotal question. There's no way to artfully dodge this question so as to conclude that Jesus might be partially Lord, or to a certain degree the Christ, or maybe in some ways eternal Son, or perhaps truly God. Finally, he must either be or not be this Messiah. He must either be or not be Lord, this is the, the, the nut of the Christian question. Who is Jesus? He is God in the flesh, and we worship him as a result. Uh, Christians worship Jesus, and that's awesome. I, I know I'm belaboring this point, but I just want to say this. I think it's critical for us to get this, that Jesus was with God in the beginning, and he was God, uh, and that he still is God in the flesh. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you so much that you sent Jesus into this world to uh, be the savior of our sins. But thank you also that Jesus is very truly God, that we can worship him. And he taught us to pray to you in his name. And so that's how we pray. But we also know that it is perfectly acceptable to pray to Jesus because Jesus is God. It's perfectly acceptable to worship Jesus because Jesus is God. Um, we thank you for this great salvation that came through the incarnation of, of God the Son at Christmas. God, we pray that you would bless the Van Heemst Deeper Life Group tonight, bless their study, bless their connection with each other. We pray for your presence and your blessing on our Advent service Sunday morning at 10 and on our deeper, deeper life group for teens in the evening. God, please bless New Beginnings Church. Bless people through New Beginnings Church. May your word go forth and may your spirit be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I love you, New Beginnings. I Thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video, and I look forward to talking to you again on Monday.